This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Baruch and welcome everyone to this very special event, special The Light and the Splendor event, hosted by our uh, good friends Chazak, Rabbi Ilan Meirav, Rabbi Yaniv Meirav. Thank you so much for hosting this event yet again um, in order to uh, have the opportunity to speak about uh, a new Sefer that came out. And of course, we want to thank our wonderful sponsors, Reb Rabbi Newman, Chickens for Shabbos, who are sponsoring this event, Lekavod, the new Sefer. Once again, we had a number of uh, shiurim um, in honor of the release of the Sefer, Alaka de Meir Anini. And now, Reb Rabbi Newman and Chickens for Shabbos are sponsoring a shir, Lekavod, the Sefer, the Light and the Splendor. Now I do want to mention, I mentioned the Sefer El Akadamer Anini. The Sefer is now on sale at our website, rabbidg.com. The Sefer is considerably discounted and you could get free delivery. And all the Svarim, um, the Siyat Deshmeyer, are, are available there. But tonight we're speaking about the Sefer, the Light and the Splendor. And I want to thank uh, Reb Rabbi Newman and Chickens for Shabbos, which are dedicated simply for the most basic Jewish need to feed Yidin that don't have food, especially Malamdim, especially Rabbeim and Yeshivas, because without our Rabbeim, without our teachers, there is no Klal Yisrael. Without a dedicated Rabbeim to teach the next generation, we don't have any hope for a future. So this is an organization which is literally upholding Klal Yisrael. There is no overhead. And if you'd like to donate, you could go to their website, uh, it's the YadEliezer.com, the Yad Eliezer website, and you go to the special icon for Malamdim, Gerushois, Agunois, and please uh, contribute generously. You are not just supporting um, a few individuals, you are literally supporting all of Klal Yisrael. Now tonight's uh, event is dedicated in uh, honor of the Sefer, the Light and the Splendor. And you ask, we already had an event in honor of the Sefer. Why are we doing it again? I knew you would ask that question. And that is because the Sefer has two parts. There's the Light part and the Splendor part. And until now we spoke about the Light. And uh, so many people have been waiting with great anticipation. When are we going to speak about the Splendor? When will it be the time for a splendorous evening. So tonight is the splendorous evening. The splendor part of the Sefer is uh, the part that speaks about Tu B'Shvat, which amazingly is coming. This Thursday is already Rosh Chodesh Shvat. Now, Rosh Chodesh Shvat is not just the month, the Rosh Chodesh of what Tu B'Shvat is in, but actually Rosh Chodesh Shvat is Rosh Hashanah Li'ilanos according to Beishamai. And as we're going to see, it is Rosh Hashanah La'ilanos of the future of La'asad Lavai, because in the future we will paskin like Beishamai, but stay tuned for that. There is an incredible Sefer called Sefer Hamenhagim of the Kahal Kodesh Varmaiza, Worms. Now that's a very interesting name, Worms. Um, that's uh, not every city that you live, you've been to is called Worms. That's not a typical name to call a city. Why is it called Worms? In fact, uh, for those who are students of Jewish history, the name of that city was not always Worms, but, for example, one of the great Rishonim, the Raikeach, he is called Rabbi Eliezer of Garmaiza. So, is Garmaiza the same thing as Varmaiza? So the Chida brings... And actually, I'll tell you a little bit of an inside um, scoop on, the, on some of the inner workings of Art Scroll. See, I quoted from a Sefer. I'm going to show you what Sefer it's in. Don't go anywhere. The name of the Sefer is Magel Toiv of the Chida. The Chida uh, recorded his travels in a diary called Magel Toiv. Now, the Chida traveled all over Europe, collecting money for the yeshivas of Eretz Yisrael. He was one of the Shadarim, one of the Shluche Rachmana, who collected money for the yeshivas in Eretz Yisrael. And the, and the Chida published his uh, diary in the Magel Toiv. Many say he had no intention to publish it, or perhaps he didn't even want it to be published. 
but he did record his travels and it's now available in English, The Diaries of Rabbi Hayim Yosef David Azulai. In Hebrew it's called The Magal Toiv. And there, in it, he records a legend. Now, what's very interesting is, not in every edition of the Magal Toiv is this legend recorded. And therefore, at first, um, I was being recommended not to include this story in The Light and the Splendor, because this is not uh, necessarily universally accepted, and some even claim this has a basis in German, uh, ancient German legend. But nevertheless, the Chida does quote it. And I was told, not in every edition, but my argument was, in my edition, it does appear. It appears in the Freeman edition of the Chida Sefer, Magel Toiv. And that is, hundreds of years ago, there was a wild beast that entered the city and began to plague the residents of the city. And this beast had a strange appetite. It consumed one human being every day, in its entirety. Now one day, a particular individual was selected to be the beast's meal for the day, and he strapped a sword to his body, and he was fed to the beast. After being swallowed and surviving, he took the sword and stabbed the beast from the inside of its belly, killing the animal, and from here on, the name of this location was no longer called Germaiza, but rather Vermaiza, after this very strange beast. Okay, so in the city of Vermaiza, here was the minog of Tu B'Shvat. The minog of Tu B'Shvat was, they would close the yeshivas, and they would tell the students, stay home. And, by the way, this is also brought in, not only in the Sefer Hamin Hagim of Kahal Kodesh Varmaiza of Rabbi Yusuf Shamish, but also in Minhage Varmaiza, in Minhag Mikri Da'adaki. So the custom in Varmaiza was to close the yeshiva in on Tu B'Shvat. Now, I know a lot of kids who are now considering moving to the city of Armaiza. Now, I don't recommend that to move to Germany right now, especially if your parents live here in New York or in the United States of America or anywhere else. But that was the ancient custom of the city of Armaiza, and this is certainly worthy of our attention. And Rav Asher Weiss, Hagoin Rav Asher Weiss, in his Minchas Asher on the Mayadim, page Nun Gimel, wonders why would the custom in the Jewish people be to close the yeshivas. After all, there is nothing more important to the continuity and vitality of Jewish children and all of Klal Yisrael than the learning of Tinoika Shabbos Rabban. Why would they have closed the yeshivas? And Hagon Rav Asher Weiss offers the following thesis to try to explain this ancient custom. He quotes the Eretz Tzvi, the Kuzhuglover Goin, who was a student, by the way, the Kuzhuk Lover Goyen was the last Rosh Shiva of Chachmi Lublin, the Rosh Shiva after Rav Meir Shapiro, and he was a student of the Sacha Rebbe, the Eglay Tal, Rebbe of Ram Bornstein. And he says over in the name of his Hela Gerebbe, the Eglay Tal, that the Eglay Tal writes that on every Tu B'Shvat, he felt a change for the better. In the quality of his Chidushe Torah, he felt an elevation, he felt a difference in his Chidushim, in his Torah novella. And, in fact, says the Egleital, this that we say that Tu is Rosh Hashanah La Ilanois, he says, since man in the Torah is compared to a tree, and therefore man's fruits are his Chidushe Torah. So if we say that Tu B'Shvat is Rosh Hashanah La Ilanois, it's a new year for the tree, and we are the tree, we are compared to the tree. As the Gemara says in Tainus on Dab Zayin, Rabbi Yirmiya says to Rabbi Zera, why don't you say something? So Rabbi Zera said, I'm too weak and I can't. So Rabbi Yirmiya said, why don't you say some Divrei Agadita? So Rabbi Yirmiya, as Rabbi Zera said, let me tell you what Rabbi Yochanan said that a man is compared to a tree. The Pasuk says, Ki ha'adam itz hasada. Is man a tree? This is talking about when the Jewish people go to war. So the halacha is that you can't, uh, you can't destroy the fruit trees. It says, Ki ha'adam itz hasada. The halacha is, you can't def- destroy the fruit trees. But the terminology of the Pasuk seems to compare man to a tree. So, 
based on this analogy that man is comparable to a tree, then his chidushim are his fruits. So says the Eretz Tzvi, the Kuzhag Lover Goyen, in the name of his Hela Gerebbe, the Sachat Shavar Rebbe, that when Chazal say that Tu is Rosh Hashanah Lo'ilana, a deeper meaning is it is a Rosh Hashanah for man, for what aspect of man? For man's chidushim. In fact, the Eglay Tal says, that is the primary role and purpose of Tu B'Shvat. It is a Rosh Hashanah Lo'ilanois. Its function is, it serves as the new year for the Chidushe Taira. And it is a time that a person could experience a inspiration and a rejuvenation and great mo- motivation to say new Chidushim, hence Egletal felt a change in the quality of his Chidushim beginning on Tu B'Shvat. In fact, Rabbi Shawais cites many Mamari Chazal that liken man to a tree. And what are man's fruits? Man's fruits are his Chidushim. For example, the Gemara in Saita says, Andaf Memvav, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Ben Shaul. Why does the Torah say to bring an Egla Aruf on the Nachal? Says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Let this Egla that doesn't make fruits and let it be destroyed in a nachal that doesn't produce fruits as a kapara for killing someone who can no longer produce fruits. So, the question is, if this refers to Piria Verivia, the Gemara asks, well, if somebody kills a zakain or a sris, so then we should not have to go through this procedure because they were not capable of producing fruits. So the Gemara says rather it refers to mitzvah. So we see that the Torah that one's le- one learns and the mitzvahs that one performs are likened to the fruits of a person. And therefore, this is a day that one could gain extra siyata deshmaya in praying for the ability to say and to create and to innovate nu chidushe Torah. Therefore, suggests Rav Ashawais, perhaps that is the reasoning behind the custom in Varmaiza of why they close the yeshivas on Tu B'Shvat. We're sending a message to our youth. We're saying, typically, the way that you grow in your learning and in your development is going to the yeshiva and conversing with the Rebbe, speaking and learning with the Rebbe, seeing how the Rebbe learns and learning from his methodology. But there are times in the year where one will develop most if one is left to be able to cultivate their own chidushe Torah, to be able to develop and... Um, innovate their own chidushim. And since Tu B'Shvat is the day which a person could sense and re- realize new innovations in Torah thought, so we close the yeshivas and we tell our youth, this one's for you, today is for you. Today, don't rely on the Rebbe. Today, try to cultivate and develop your own chidushim Torah. It's Rosh Hashanah Lo'ilanois. It is a new year to be able to develop your own Torah novella. Now, we find an amazing thing. We know we have Torah Shabbat Sav, we have the Chamisha Chumshe Torah, we have Torah Shabbat Peh. We have the Oral Law, we have the Mesechtas of Shas. But there is an element of our Chumash that has a dimension of Torah Shabbat Peh to it, namely Sefer Devarim. The Gemara Megillah calls Sefer Devarim, Moshe Mipi Atzmai Amra. Moshe said it in his own music, with his own terminology, in his own voice as opposed to the first four books where he was merely saying over Mipi HaGevura what God told him. But Sefer Devarim, it has an element of Moshe's voice to it. It has an element of Tar Shabbat When did Moshe Rabbeinu teach Sefer Devarim to the Jewish people? Well, in the beginning of Devarim, Parak Aleph, Pasuk Gimel, and it was in the 40th year. In the 11th month, on the first day, Moshe spoke to the Jewish people in accordance with everything. In accordance with everything that Hashem spoke to them. Moshe taught Devarim Mishnah Torah Rosh Chodesh Shvat. Why did Moshe teach Mishnah Torah Rosh Chodesh Shvat? Mishnah Torah is a Tarshabal Peh. 
Rosh Chodesh Shvat is Rosh Hashanah La Ilanos. The Ilan is the Adam, is the Tzaddik. The teaching are the Peirois. So since, says Rav Gedal Yashor, there's a concept of Gavoya Al Gavoya Shaymer, that this physical world is merely a manifestation of the spiritual world. What happens on Tu B'Shvat? Tu B'Shvat is Rosh Hashanah La Ilanos. We'll explain that soon. It is the day that the sap begins to rise in the tree, and that is when Chanata starts. That is the earliest stage of the development of the fruit, where the sap on the inner mechanism of the tree begins to rise up in the tree. Now, if the sap is rising in the tree, and that's the beginning of the process of the fruit, that is just merely a physical manifestation of the spiritual phenomenon that transpires on Rosh Chodesh Shvat, namely the kernel and the seed of ideas of Chidush Torah begin to rise in the consciousness of man, in the inner mind of a person. And this is the earliest stage of Torah teaching and Torah ideas. And therefore, it is this day of the year which is most mesugal for teaching, for Torah novella, for delivering and disseminating Torah, Rosh Chodesh Shvat. And therefore Moshe began to teach the Torah to Klal Yisrael on Rosh Chodesh Shvat. So you'll ask, what's going on over here? The, the fact that um, Rosh Chodesh Shvat is Rosh Hashanah Ilanos is only the opinion of Beis Shammai. But Beis Hillel disagrees. Beis Hillel maintains that Rosh Hashanah Ilanos is Tu B'Shvat. Beis Shammai says it's Rosh Chodesh Shvat. So it comes out that what Moshe Rabbeinu is doing is only in accordance with Beis Shammai. But Beis Hillel's opinion is that it's on Tu B'Shvan. And comes the Chidush Harim in the Sefer Hazuchus, and he says, wait a second, Moshe Rabbeinu very logically is in fact going with the opinion of Beis Shammai. And that is because we just read Parsha Shemais, and in Parsha Shemais, Rav Hashem is trying to persuade Moshe, take the Jewish people out of Egypt. You're the man for the job. I need you to be their leader. I need you to be their guide. I need you to be their shepherd. And Moshe says the following expression, Loi ish devarim anoichi. I am not a man of many words. Says the Chidush Harim. Loi ends with an Aleph. Ish ends with a Shin. Tevarim ends in a mem. Anoichi ends in a yud. Soifei tevois, shamai. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, I'm a shamai man. I'm not the right guy to take the Jewish people out of Egypt. I am a man of halacha. Noikev hadin esahar. I uphold the law to the letter of the law. I am similar to Shammai, who when a ger came in and said, teach me the Torah, standing on one foot, Shammai said, I can't do that. I am someone who upholds the law, and I cannot allow somebody's preference or idiosyncrasy to cause me to bend or deviate from the normative letter of the law. Moshe Rabbeinu says, I'm the mechoikek, I'm the lawgiver, I'm a Shammai man, I can't be the leader of the Jewish people. So Hashem said, in a way you're right. I'm going to cause, I'm going to have Aaron be your helper. Hashem says about Aaron, Hu yia lecha lepeh. He will be for you as a mouth, as a voice piece. This is Rosh Hashem voice. Hu yia lecha lepeh. Hillel. Because as we know, Hillel Oimer, Hillel says, Hevei mitamidav shal Aaron. Be from the students of Aaron. Oyev shalom. Love peace. Veroidev shalom. Oyev es habriyos. Umakarvan la Torah. Aroin HaKoyen was a Hillel man. So Hashem says, you're right. Hu yia lecha lepeh. He will be for you as a mouth. He will be the Hillel. He will be someone who is able to tolerate people's queer idiosyncrasies. He will be able to flow and sway and ride the tide and, and ride with the people. However, you, Moshe, you continue to be noikev hadin sahar. You continue to follow the dictates of Shammai. As we know, the Malbum teaches us, Rabbi Hanan Wasserman teaches us, and further, Moshe Rabbeinu, in fact, was a Shammai man. And um, Aaron HaKoyin was a Hillel man. In the future, La'asid Lavai, the halacha will be like Shammai. Even though um, Hillel v'Shammai halacha kabeis Hillel, that's only in this world. But that's because Hashem 
created the world Bamida Sadin and he recognizes the world cannot last Amida Sadin. So we have to live in a world of Midas Harachamim. In the world that we live in today, we live in a world of Hillel. But Moshe Rabbeinu was the Betchila Allah B'Machshava Lebrois Ha'olam B'Midas Hadin. Moshe Rabbeinu was on the of Shammai. And therefore Moshe Rabbeinu, had he brought Klal Yisrael straight into Eretz Yisrael, he, uh, the Mashiach would have come and the Halacha would have always been like Shammai. So Moshe says, I'm a Shammai man. And therefore, Loi Ish Devarim Anoichi Shammai. And that is why Moshe says in the world of Shammai, the most opportune time to give over Torah, to disseminate Torah, to engender Torah novella and Chidushe Torah is Vayihi Be'arba'im Shana Be'ashtei Asar Chaydash Be'achal Chaydash and Rosh Chaydash Shvat. But in the world that we live in today, we can't pass in that way. We live in a world of Rachamim. And therefore in our world, we follow Beis Hillel that Tu Bishvat is Rosh, Chay, is Rosh Hashanah La Ilanois. That is the day that is most opportune to develop and cultivate Chidushe Torah. That's why in Varmaiza they did not go to Yeshiva on Tu Bishvat. They instead tried to cultivate their own Chidushim on the day which is most Mesugal for that, which is Tu Bishvat, the day that the sap begins to rise in the tree. And therefore the ideas and the wellspring of novel thought begins to rise in the mind and the soul of the Jew that we could develop our own Torah thoughts. Now, the Shulchan Aruch, in a rare mention of Tu Bishvat, because uh, Tu Bishvat is barely mentioned in Shulchan Aruch, in, in Arachayim it's only mentioned twice. Shulchan Aruch in Simon Kuf Lam and Aleph Sivvav says on Tu Bishvat we don't say Tachnon. Now, why in the world do we not say Tachnon on Tu B'Shvat? Because the sap rises in the tree? I mean, halachically, the only significance of the fact that the sap rises in the tree is explained in the Gemara that it's Rosh Hashanah La Ilan, that whatever grew before Rosh Chodesh Shvat or Tu B'Shvat according to Beis Hillel, you have to take Meiser off of it from last year, and whatever, uh, and from here on, whatever is Chanat afterwards, uh, the, you take off Meiser for the upcoming year. Meaning, Tu B'Shvat in Halacha is merely a line of demarcation of whatever was Nechnat previously, you take Meiser from the previous year, and whatever the Chanata occurred after Tu B'Shvat, you take Meiser for the upcoming year. Tu B'Shvat in no way is a day of judgment. Reb Yitzchak Yosef quotes Reb Chaim Noah that there is an erroneous misconception. Actually, all misconceptions are erroneous, but there is an erroneous perception and a grand misconception that Tu B'Shvat is a day of judgment. We say it's a Rosh Hashanah. It's not a day of judgment. You have to know simple Mishnah is the Mesech Rosh Hashanah. The second Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah talks about the days of judgment. The first Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah talks about New Year's. Rosh Chodesh Tishrei is Le Shmita, Le Yoivlois. Rosh Chodesh Nisan is Le Malachim, the Laregalim. Rosh Chodesh Elol is for Maiser Behima. Rosh Chodesh Shvat or Tu B'Shvat is Le Ilanois. These are not days of judgment. These are lines of demarcation of when Shemitah starts, of when a king's year begins. So what yumptive quality does Tu B'Shvat have that it would be a reason not to say Tachnon on Tu B'Shvat? So there's a very mysterious and cryptic statement of the Gra. The Gra says it's a Rosh Hashanah La Ilanois, just like all four Rosh Hashanahs which are a yumptive. And this always troubled me, because actually none of the Rosh Hashanahs are a Yom Tif. Rosh, Rosh, uh, Rosh Chaydesh Tishrei is not a Yom Tif. It's a Yom Tif because it's a Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> it's a Yom Tif because it's, the, it's, it, it's Rosh Hashanah, but it's not a Yom Tif because it's the beginning of the year for Shemitah or for Yoivel. That doesn't give it any Yom Tif quality. Rosh Chaydesh Nisan is not a Yom Tif. Yes, it's a line of demarcation for kings, and it's Rosh Hashanah, so it's Rosh Chodesh, excuse me, so you're not going to say Tachnon. But it doesn't have a Yom Tif quality. Certainly Rosh Chodesh Elul is not a Yom Tif. 
So why is two b'shvat yamtif? What does the Gra mean like all four Rosh Hashanahs? Hashem should illuminate our eyes to help us understand this difficult teaching of the Vilna Gain. The Adaras, Rebel Yo, David Rabinowitz to Umim, in his Sefer, Nefesh David, which is an autobiography, he writes that on Chamisha Asr B'Shvat, by the way, Shvat, the Chidush Arim stands for Shalom, Toiva, and Bracha, says the Adaras, he would learn Hilchos Maser in the Sefer of the Rambam. And he would endeavor to be mechadesh something on, in, the, in the area of these halachas, Hilchos Maser. Now based on what we learned from Rabbi Asher Weiss, that this is the most opportune day to begin creating and cultivating new chidushim. Perhaps this would explain why the Adaras would be mechadesh chidushe Torah on this day. And he says, after being mechadesh chidushim, he hoped that it would be considered as if he was Mekayim, the mitzvah of Masrois. And then I, he says he was Mespala, that Hashem should be Mezakehim to actually fulfill the mitzvah of Maisa. Says the Adaras, that it seems to him that the reason why the Chachamim were Koivea, to Bishvat as a Yom Tov, not to say Tachnon, is this day will then serve as a reminder to the mitzvah of Shumais and Maisrois. Because we know Chazal always remind us to remember our past. Shisu, Shisi, Libcha, Lemesila, Derech Halachta. Remember what our forefathers did. The concept of Zecher Lemikdash. So Tu B'Shvat is, so to speak, a monument and a memorial to the great institution in Kal Yisrael of Trumay Samasrois. And therefore, it was designated as a day not to say Tachnon, as a memorial to all the mitzvahs, Hatzluyas, Ba'aretz, and it is particularly a day suit, suited to study mitzvahs, hatuliyos, ba'aretz. Now we come to a very interesting teaching of none other than Rebbe Le- Eger. Two summers ago I had this chus to be at the kever of Rebbe Shloima Eger and Rebbe Kiva Eger in Pozna. And Rav Shloyma Eger wrote the Gilyayin Marsha, a commentary on Shulchan Aruch, and his son was Rav Leibola Eger, who ironically became a chassid under the influence of uh, the Meishiloach, the Ishbitzer. And Rav Leibola Eger asks a very incisive question. He says he wants to know. The Magen Avram brings that the Minog among Ashkenazim, and today this is a widespread custom, the minog is to eat many fruits on Tu B'Shvat. Ask Rebbe Leib Eger, what is the purpose of eating fruits on Tu B'Shvat? Tu B'Shvat is the day that the sap <gasps> begins to rise in the tree, preparing, the, preparing for the new crop of fruits. Whatever fruits are available on Tu B'Shvat are from last year's fruits. Why eat last year's fruits on the day that marks the beginning of the process of the new fruits. Why celebrate new fruits by eating last year's fruits? Why would you eat old fruits on the day which is the beginning of the new fruits? Says Rebbe Leib Eger. The Gemara says in Brachos, the Aflam and anyone who gets benefit from this world without a bracha is stealing from God and stealing from the Jewish people. What are you stealing from God? Says Rashi, you're stealing the blessing, the bracha. What are you stealing from the Jewish people? You're stealing the bracha because when you don't make a bracha, the fruits are stricken. Says Rebbe Leib Eger, that comes out. If by not making a bracha on fruits, you cause damage to fruits, by making a proper bracha on fruits, you infuse fruits with blessing and success, and they become more lush and more delicious and more tasty and more bountiful. So we specifically, on the Rosh Hashanah of fruits, the beginning of the process of the new fruits, we eat a lot of fruits and we make proper blessings on them. That will infuse the fruits, the upcoming fruits, with great vitality and great flavor and and aroma, and this will ensure that we have a, a successful upcoming crop. But there's another important element of making a bracha on fruits. You know, in the bracha achas me'en shalosh, in the bracha ala peros ve'a, al ha'aretz ve'a peros, we say, rachim na Hashem aleikeinu. Have mercy, our God. 
we say, V'halenu l'saycha, bring us up into the Holy Land. V'samcheinu b'vinyana, make us rejoice in its building. V'noichal mipurya, and we should eat of its fruits. And the Torah brings many Rishonim, including his father, who would not say these words, and eat of its fruits. Is that why we want to enter Eretz Yisrael, to eat of its fruits? We want to enter Eretz Yisrael to fulfill the mitzvahs that are tzuluyos ba'aretz. But heaven forbid that we should say, God, bring us into Israel, so we should eat the fruits. However, the Beis Yosef says that it's not that we're asking God to enter Israel to eat the fruits, but it's, we want to eat the fruits to be able to make a blessing on the fruits. Now, why are we so keen on making a blessing on the fruits? Well, one important aspect of making a blessing on the fruits is revealed by the Arizal. The Arizal writes in Parshas Ekev in the Shara Mitzvahs, the Rabbi Chaim Vital says that the Arizal would warn us to be very careful in Berchas Hanehanen. In fact, the Kafachayim brings in Simon Kufla Amir Aleph, Sivkat on Vav, that Iker Hasogas Ha'odom El Ruach HaKodesh, the primary way that a person can attain the Holy Spirit, is Tluya Al Yedei Kavanas Ha'odom Uzehirus Bechol Berchas Hanehanen. It's dependent on how careful a person is in the blessings they make on foods. Because food has a certain impurity in it. And when you make the proper bracha, it cleanses the food. And when a person eats them and makes a proper bracha, you remove all the klipais and it purifies your physicality and you become zach, umuchan, lekabel, kedusha. And says Rabbi Chaim Yitav, that reason warned me greatly that when I make a bracha, I have to make it with the proper kavanah because the person can be greatly elevated by making a bracha on berchas hanen and therefore we're mispalel. Ba'alena l'saycha, v'noicha mipirya, why unavarecha ha'alev, v'kdusha avtara. But let's add one idea. The Bach in Simon Reish Chas says that actually there's an inherent value in eating the fruits of Eretz Yisrael. And that is, the fruits of Eretz Yisrael are nourished from the heavenly corresponding Eretz Yisrael, which is nourished from the actual Shechina itself. In other words, there's a concept that the fruits of Eretz Yisrael have an, an embodiment of the sanctity of the Shechina. And when you consume the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, you are actually consuming sanctity and an embodiment of the holiness of the Shechina itself. And it's a great elevation. Therefore we pray, Yes God, bring us into Israel. Why? V'noichal mipuria. We will consume its fruits and thereby imbibe and inculcate and ingest the holiness of the Shechina. We will completely re- revitalize the spiritual makeup of our being. In fact, in the Sefer Chesed Li Avram, of the great-grandfather of the Chidar, of Avram Azulai, he asks, why is it that we only had the man in the Midbar? In the Midbar, and by the way, this Bach would explain the custom of the Ben Eshchai. The Ben Eshchai would try to procure for Tu B'Shvat specifically fruits from Eretz Yisrael. Fruits from Eretz Yisrael? How, wh- wh- why specifically the fruits of Eretz Yisrael? If it's just about, about making a blessing and sanctifying our, ourselves with the blessing, why do we specifically need the fruits of Eretz Yisrael? But now we understand because the fruits of Eretz Yisrael are an embodiment of the Shekhinah on high. Says the Chesed Li Avram, why was it that we only had man in the desert and not in Israel? What, Israel is not as holy as the desert? In Israel you can't have man? And the Chesed Avram says, in Israel, we don't need the man. In Israel, you have the fruits of the Aretz, and the fruits of the Aretz was mislabish with the food and the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. And in that case, um, and in that case, we would be elevated and sanctified merely through the fruits of Eretz Yisrael. But in the Midbar, which was a place of klipais and darkness and Tumah, if we were to consume the fruits of the desert, that fruit was nourished and fed and, su- and got its sustenance from the amakam of the Sitra Achra, it would defile us. 
But once we entered the Holy Land, the Holy Land didn't need the man. When we were in the Holy Land, the, consuming the fruits of Eretz Yisrael was a greater elevation even than the man. Now, I'll share with you. The man was such holy food, the Gemara says, The man is what purified us to be able to receive the Torah. But apparently, the fruit of Eretz Yisrael has an even greater degree of Kedusha. And therefore, when we were in Eretz Yisrael, we didn't need the man, we had the fruit of Eretz Yisrael. Perhaps we could explain that this is the significance of the fact that Tu B'Shvat always falls out on the week that we read Parshas B'Shalach about the Mun, indicating that yes, in the Midbar we had a command to the Mun, but even greater than the Mun, even greater than the food from heaven are the fruits of Eretz Yisrael. If one could be a beneficiary of the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, that would be an even greater elevation. So if the Magen Avram says that Minog Yisrael is to consume the fruits of uh, many fruits on Tu B'Shvat, then like all Minhag Yisrael, which are laden with so much significance and, and meaning, this Minhag is surely one of them. So we pick up a fruit. If we make a bracha properly, it injects vitality into the upcoming crop, as taught by Reb Leibel Eger. And if we make a proper bracha, it elevates us, it removes any impurity from the fruit, and it will elevate us, as the Arizal taught, it could even elevate us to the Madrega of Ruach HaKodesh. And if we're able to get our hands on fruits of Eretz Yisrael, that would be an even greater elevation. But this Minog Yisrael is certainly Yisudasai Baharei Kodesh, is founded in great and uh, dramatic meaning. One time, the Hasidim were sitting around the Tish of the great Sadik, the Tzvi Hersh uh, Actually, Rabbi Yitzchak Isaac of Zidachav. And he was giving out the fruits, and lo and behold, there were so many Hasidim around the table, they ran out of fruits. And Rabbi Yitzchak Isaac of Zidachav says, Don't sweat it. Imperois atem evakshim. If you're seeking fruits, if it's fruits that you want, I have just the secret for you. You want peirois. Elu dvarim sha'adam oichel peroisem ba'olam hazeh. The following things a person eats from the fruits in this world. The hakaren kayemesoi ba'olam haba. The Talmud Torah connected kolam. You want to eat fruits? The greatest fruits are learning Torah. So what better way to prepare for Tu B'Shvat than by learning Torah about the great custom of eating fruits because our greatest peroys, aside of course from our mitzvah samasim toivim, and supporting Malam Dei Torah, by supporting chickens for Shabbos, which will give us Peirois Ba'olam Hazeh, and the Hakaren Kehemes Lein Maba, but our greatest Peirois are Vetam Otar Keneged Kulam, especially on Tu B'Shvat, where the yeshivas were closed so that the Tamidim could begin to cultivate their own learning and their own teaching and their own Chidush Torah. May this month of Shvat, which is a month of Shalom, Bracha, Toiva, may it bring us great Hashpois, Hashpois influences of Gashmias, may the Rebbe be Mashpia on us, Parnasa Berevach, and even more importantly, may the Rebbe pour on us the rain that will cultivate within us a Tshuka to learn Torah, to be Mechadesh in Torah, and to connect to our Rabbanim, Rabbeim, and the Torah HaKadosha. May this month bring Klal Yisrael great Peirois, Baruchnias Vagashmias Amen Kenihi Ratsain wishing everybody a Baris Hashem a Choydesh Mavoyreches Vachal Tov Sela Bracha Vatslacha Thank you so much for listening. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.